I am looking forward to this year. But can I tell you this? I am not looking forward to June or the end of the year for God to do something. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I'm looking forward to now when we're going to minister. I'm looking forward to when God comes and a broken heart walks in here and by the Spirit of God, He gets touched and He walks out here a whole person. That is what I'm excited about. I'm excited to know that I walk out here with His blood flowing through my veins. I'm excited to know that I can go to my workplace and His presence goes with me. That's what I'm excited about, friends. I'm not waiting for an event and I'm going to clap my hands and say, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. That's what I was looking for. Now what now? No, it's a journey. Every single day, every step that I take, He is with me, He is in me, and He's operating through me. I'm excited for that. I'm excited to know that I can go to my workplace and sit there, not opening my word, and the presence of God will hit the person next to me. That's what God wants to do in and through me and you. Not just sitting here receiving and walking out here and just living a life wondering what's happening. No, friends. God is active and He wants to do something in and through our lives. When you're in the traffic, when you're sitting in a mall, when you're doing your things, friends, I tell you now, God wants to start operating in and through you like you never thought you would be. Yeah, but my personality. Friends, can I tell you what? Roots with your personality. Open up your life and say, God, I want to be a channel that you can flow through and touch people's lives. Friends, I almost feel that we are, you know what, when you play sport and you get to that injury time and it's, it's like a draw and you know you need to win. I almost feel that we are at that time where it's, we're in injury time. And there's so many of our friends, there's so many of our family, there's so many of people around us that needs to hear about this good news. Can we start being excited about the fact that we will live forever, but we want to take everybody with us to know Him, to serve Him, and to be with Him. Amen. Acts 2 verse 17. In the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young, young men shall see visions, and your old men shall play in the bully band. No, wait shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's get back, friends, to this place where we start seeing visions, where we start prophesying, and where we start dreaming dreams. I want to get excited about young men that start operating in what God's got for them. You know what? I'm starting to, not being more at the edge of 30, I'm going more towards the middle of 40. And, and I'm not having dreams yet. So that means I'm not old yet. <laughs> so I'm okay with that. But you know what? I've said it so many times from here, and I experience it when I speak to people. Uh, older people sometimes want to call it quits on their life and say, you know what, I've reached this age. Friends, it's time for our older people to start dreaming dreams again. It's time for our young people to start seeing visions. It's time for us to start prophesying over each other. And I'm not talking about the end of the year. I'm talking about tonight. I'm talking about now. I'm talking about tomorrow morning. Let's start operating in what God has got for us. As I was preparing for tonight, um, I had something specific in my mind and I put it on the shelf and praying over it and, and wondering about that. And you know what? The last thing you want to do is stand up here and, and miss the mark completely. You know, you look like a tool bag and you don't want to do that. You look like, you're like you've missed it now. And as I was preparing, and I was not sure, I was like, God, this, this is what I feel. We were at a connect time for all the Gauteng elders, and one of the gentlemen spoke, stand up, and he spoke exactly word by word the thought that I had in my head and the thing I put on the shelf. So I just said, Lord, thank you so much for this. I'm going to go with that. So guys, just hang in with me. Maybe I'm talking to one person tonight. Maybe I'm speaking to 10 or 20. But if this is for you, I want you to take it and make it your own. Okay. We are in the year 2020. Now there's so many of these visions and dreams and signals going through, you know, all these slogans and everything. 
There's people that already got their 10 steps to get a better life, a better wallet, and a better wife or husband. Okay. So you already got it planned out. Listen to what I'm saying. Scripture says, my people perish because of the lack of vision. I'm with you. Plan ahead. Make sure that you know, God, this is where I'm going. This is what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not throwing this out the water. But can I tell you what? There are people here tonight that are not feeling the same as you. There are people sitting here. There are friends that you talk to. There are family members that you are engaging with that are not feeling this 2020 vision as you are. They're actually in the middle of the night waking up with night sweats thinking, I cannot go another day to work like this. There's people that actually will just make up anything not to go to work because there's just that anxiety and that fear in their lives. There's people out there that will binge watch TV series forever and ever so that they can't face reality. There's people that are withdrawing so far from other people and God that they just don't want to engage either with a person or with God. There's people like that sitting in here amongst us that is feeling that, that is fighting that. Friends, I want to tell you that you are not alone. There's three guys I want to just look at quickly. Number one, David. He lost people around him. He grieved. He felt lonely. He was angry. He had fear. Feared for his life. Yes, this, uh, some of the Psalms that he wrote, you could see there was guilt there. Hey, why? Because he messed up. He knew, yes, my sin is dragging me down. I've messed it up. Psalm 38 verse 3, there is no soundness in my flesh because of indignation. There is no health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head like a heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. My wounds stink and fester because of my foolishness. This not, surely doesn't sound like a happy chappy, eh? This does not sound like a guy who's looking at 2020 and going, I can do this, man. I've got my plan set out. I am ready to go. This looks more like the guy that says, I will not stand up tomorrow morning. I will leave my head on that blanket and no one's going to get me off this thing. This is David we're talking about. Scripture talks about him as the friend of God. This is him writing the psalm. Psalm 42 verse 11. Why are you so cast down? Oh, my soul, why are you in turmoil with me? David writing this. The second guy is Jonah. Now, we all know Jonah. Hey, God gives him a message and says, Go to Nineveh and give my people this specific message. So what does he do? Does he go and do it? No. He says, Where's Nineveh? There. Fine. I'm going there. I'm not doing this. I'm not going there. I don't want to bring them this message. He hops on a boat. He goes, and all of a sudden, there's this massive storm. Yes, these oaks on this ship is actually terrified. So he eventually goes to them and says, guys, you know what? I think it's my fault. This storm is me. So in the grace and love they have for him, what did they do? Throw him overboard. Like, thank you. Cheers, goodbye. Out of here. Dish. He had some cozy time there in a guppy. This guppy spits him out on the shore. He goes, he brings the word of God to this people. The task God is giving him, the word God spoke into his heart to go and give to people. He fulfills that. He goes and he brings this message to the people that God has given him. Look at this. He writes here in Jonah 4, 3. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. I don't know about you, but this does not sound like a guy that is excited for the year 2020. This does not look like a guy that's got his plan set out and he knows what he... This guy is in a place of turmoil. The third guy. This guy is... If, if I look at the Old Testament, this is a specific person. That I'm like, Lord, I would, if I can just be half of this oak's left toe, I'll be awesome. You know? Elijah. 1 Kings 18. There's the... the, the place where they get and he is with the, the, the prophets of Baal and they've got two offers and he said okay the God that answers with fire he is the real God so there's 450 Baal prophets going ballistic cutting themselves dancing chanting doing their thing nothing's happening Elijah goes looks up and he says Lord hear my prayer 
God answers his prayer and he answers with fire. I don't know about you, but that's a massive victory. Right there. The next verse, 1 Kings 9.3. Then he was afraid. He rose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which along belongs to Judah. He left his servants there. In verse 4, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, came and sat down under a broom tree. In Afrikaans, is it the Beersheba? I don't know. And he asked that he might die, saying, it's enough. O Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He has seen God operating. He has heard God's voice. He has seen a miracle. This eventually, after God answered him, he goes and he kills 450 men himself. A couple of verses later, he is saying, Lord, take my life. I can't do this anymore. I'm afraid. I've got fear in my life. I can't do this. Again, this does not sound like a man that is ready for the year 2020. He is looking at things around him. He's looking at circumstances and he's gripped with fear. And he says, Lord, it is better for me to die. I can't do this. I'm running away. I'm in a desert. I'm out of here. Enough is enough. Genoeg is genoeg, maar ek is klaar. You are not alone. You can look at Jeremiah. You can look at Job. You can look at mighty man that did amazing thing for God. Heard God's voice. Operated in levels that I would dream of doing things for him. And they got to that place where they had fear. And they got gripped by that. And that was the one thing that's in front of them. And they're like, I can't do this anymore. I'm struggling with this. I'm fighting this. Now, if you have your Bibles, please open in the book of James, verse 4. Or if you have a phone, or a tablet, or a, I don't know, a scroll, anything, open it up with me. As I was reading through James, and as I'm looking in that, I actually, in Bible college, I come out of a bit of a, the AFM church, bit of, more structure, a bit of more religion, a bit of more togetherness, you know. It's not New Day. And uh, I went to study at Bible College and I started reading James intensely. And I started studying the book of James. I started reading this. And there were so many challenging factors in James that I actually ripped it out of my Bible. Like, this is too much. For me. I read the rest of the Bible, but James, this is challenging me on every level. Because he's just shaking religion out of people, eh? He's just like, you know what? You thought you got it covered. Quickly read this. You don't know anything yet. So for me, the book of James is something that I look at, and there's so many nuggets in there. There's so many things that you and I can take. And out of that, James 4 verse 7, if you're feeling like that today, if you are saying, you know what? I'm gripped by that fear. I am fighting a battle. I'm standing at a place where I can't lift my head up. You know what? I don't want to face people. I don't want to. I'm actually also pointing my life away from God because I can't do this anymore. Listen to James. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double minded. The message translation says it like this. So let God work His will in you. He all allows no to the devil and watch him scamper. Say a quiet yes to God and He'll be there in no time. Quit dabbling in sin. Purify your inner life. Quit playing the field. Quit playing the field. The first thing James tells us is submit yourself to God. Submit yourself to God. The dictionary says the following about submit. It says, accept or yield to superior force or to the authority or will of another person. Now, if you go look at the Greek word, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. It gives it the, the meaning to obey, be under obedience, put under, subdue unto, or submit self unto. The word was used in a military term, meaning to arrange troops 
divisions in a military fashion under the command of a leader. This word is a wonderful definition of what it means to submit to God. It means to arrange oneself under the command of a divine viewpoint rather than to live according to one's old way of life. It is a process surrendering our own will to that of our fathers. I know you are fighting this fight. Your fight is real. Your struggle is real. But I can tell you this, my God is also real. And he is saying, submit to me. Yield yourself. Come under. Come under his authority. Who of you here got dogs? More than one dog in a house. Okay. And don't look at your husband like that. She's that just wrong, man. Actual dogs. You know those little hairy canaries that's running around there. Now, there's, there's a, what do you call it? A peck or picking order, a pecking order, whatever order. Hey. So there's always a chief in charge. There's always the one dog that's the alpha dog. He is in charge. He's there. He's in front. You will see that when these little ones come and this one turns around, what do they do? Do they challenge him? A lot of the times you'll even see them roll it around. Hey, roll over and they just lie there. Some of them like wet themselves even. They're like, <laughs> yes, you boss. You know, they get to that place. And I've seen how dogs just roll over and they surrender. They're like, okay, you're it. Can I tell you what? When you're in that place where you're gripped with fear, when you're in that place when you don't know what to do anymore, friends, I want to ask you something weird. Roll over and submit to him. Give in to his authority. Get to that place where you realize that he is God and you are not. He is in control. You are not. Come under his authority. This morning, Greg preached about the kingdom. Friends, we are in this kingdom. You're not above it. You're not around it. You're under this king. He's in charge. He will reign and rule supreme. Come under this mighty God. Yield your life to him. Yield your life to him. God does not require us to submit because he's a tyrant, but because he's a loving father and he knows what is best for us. The blessing and peace that we gain from humbly surrendering and submitting ourselves to him daily or a gift of grace that nothing in this world can compare to. Submitting to Him daily. Every day when you wake up, when you start feeling like that, when you go to bed and you feel like that, friends, roll over and submit under the authority of God. Lord, I give myself to You. I surrender. That's what I'm feeling. That's what I'm going through. I'm placing it under You. Under You. Okay. Second one. Draw near to him in genesis there's the garden god is walking with adam and eve there's a relationship there's fellowship he's with them 2 corinthians 5 18 all this is from god who through christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation friends god wants to have a relationship with you he wants to have fellowship with you he wants to walk alongside you he wants to be with you he loves you so much that he wants that interaction with you he longs for that when you and i focus on our fear when you focus on that thing that's gripping you down when you are only obsessing sometimes over this what are you and i doing we are drawing our attention away from the one that loves us we are taking all our effort and we're putting it in this basket and we are, we are actually building this mountain to the place that it is everything in front of us. And you're looking at this and you're thinking, I cannot come over this. I cannot. But on this side, there's a God standing saying, draw close to me. Draw close to me. Draw close to me. Friends, it's going to cost for me and you to turn our attention away and say, Lord, I draw back to you. I'm coming back to you how do we do that pray study the word serve and love others pray study the word serve and love others when you wake up in that morning draw your attention away from what you are seeing here instead of looking at this saying lord i'm turning my eyes back this is my reality this is what i'm facing but thank you lord that you are the life giver. Thank you that you are the one that answers. Thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Thank you that you are the one that looks after me. Thank you. We start praying. What are we doing? We're shifting our focus to Him. 
when you and I take our word and we start studying this word and it starts gripping our hearts and it starts changing things, what are you and I doing? We are drawing near to Him. We're moving away from what is over here and we are drawing back to God. Friends, when you and I start serving in this family, what do you do? You start looking at others. You start helping others. What did Jesus do when He came to earth? He came to serve, not to be served. He teaches us the whole time. He washed the feet of His disciples. His attention was there and He's doing this. Friends, I tell you what, when you start washing your friend's feet next to you, when you start serving, you take your focus of this and you put it on the God and saying, I'm over here. I'm drawing close to you. And when you start loving others, your whole, your whole life starts changing because you realize, you know what, I'm not alone in this. I have a New Day family. I have a family that's there for me, that loves me. I'm going to a home group. Friends, why is a home group? Why? What is this all about? Because I can phone my friends and say, I'm fighting this fight. And they say, you know what? I'm not right there with you, but I can pray with you. I can stand in the gap for you. That's why I have a home group. That's why we have connections with people. That's why we're discipling people. That's why we have this family, friends, so that you're not on an island alone, but you are with someone that says, you know what? I'll walk this road with you. All of a sudden, your attention is drawn away and you are drawing closer to the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Savior, the one that will look after you. The last one, cleanse your hands and purify your hearts. Now, I know looking at this, he is talking about the process of salvation. This is to new believers. This is people that doesn't know that's been sinning and he's saying, wash your hands and get saved. But do you know that in the Jewish community, it is custom to wash their hands before they go and worship. So before they enter into the place of worship, they will have a bowl outside where they'll wash their hands before they start worshiping this God. In our hearts, if you're in that place and you're fighting this battle, sometimes we start making our own plans here. How can I get out of this? How can I do that? Yes, maybe I must play the lotto. <laughs> Maybe I, must, maybe I must just do one of these two things. And we start planning things in our hearts. Hey. And when we start operating, we start doing it with our hands. We start physically making our own plans. Not what God said, but what we are feeling and what we are thinking. And we start doing it with these hands. James is saying, wash your hands, cleanse your heart. Wash your hands and cleanse your heart. Not about how I want to do it, but Lord, I want to come back. What is it that you want me to do? Lord, how is it that you want me to do it? 2 Corinthians 2 Chronicles 7.14 If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear them from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Ask for forgiveness and turn away. Lord, I realize that I'm making plans in my heart and my head and I'm starting to do my own thing. I'm starting to do these little things that I think will help me. I'm in this situation and I think this is what I must do. Lord, forgive me. Cleanse my hands. Purify my heart. Come back to what it is you want me to do. I've learned very quickly in my life that when it comes to God, when it comes to Jesus, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, there's no plan B. He is everything. He's your plan A, B, C, and D. You're not going to serve Him and think, I'm going to do my own little thing on the side. Friends, it is Him and Him alone. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the all-knowing God. He's the all-present God. He's always there. He knows us in and out. There's no plan B when it comes to God. Submit yourselves to Him. Draw near to Him. Cleanse your hands and purify your heart. Listen to this psalm. Psalm 34 verse 18. Listen, listen to this nicely, friends. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and He saved the crushed spirit. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and He saves the crushed in spirit. If you're sitting here tonight, and that is how you feel, He is near, and He's here to save. This loving Father, 
that cares so much for you is here tonight and is here to heal and to save. I know your struggle is real. I know what you're going through is a reality, friends. But can I tell you what? He is here tonight to break, to, to heal the brokenhearted and is here to set us free. He's here to save us. I want to end with this. I've here got a battery pack. Now, do you know what is a battery pack for? Not everybody out loud, just one at a time. Okay, so I wake up in the morning, I rush out of home, and I realize my phone, you know when it gives you that red battery? That's panic stations galore. It's like, yes, like at what now? I can't do this, I can't check the scores of the cricket, I can't do anything, because my phone is dying, you know? Then this little thing comes in very handy, because I plug it in, and it charges my phone. But, along the line, this thing also gives me a red battery. I was like, yes, like it, man. What is going on here? I have to go home and I have to actually plug this into the plug. The plug has got unlimited power unless you stay in South Africa. I know, okay. <laughs> Not a good point, hey? But if I plug this into the plug, this thing will stop. This thing will run out. This thing will eventually die. But if I plug this into a power point and I plug it in and I plug my phone in, they will be charged permanently. Why? Because there's an unlimited source of power. There's an unlimited source of power. John 15 verse 4 says, Remain in me as I remain in you. Remain in me as I remain in you. In our lives, if you and I go about to plug ourselves into things, into people, into things around us and make our own plans, I'm telling you now, it's going to run out. It's going to run out. But if you plug yourself in to the life source with unlimited power, Jesus Christ, remain in Him. What does He say? I will remain in you. We need to plug into Him. We need to stay connected into the one that will look after you, that will sustain you, that will help you, that will carry you through this, that will be there for you every step that you take. But you've got to be plugged into Him. You've got to take that place and say, I want to be plugged into this source of life that is unending. His name is Jesus Christ. Close your eyes and stand with me.